love it. I swear I can just listen to the song all day long. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Monday edition of Dodgers Territory. We are your hosts. I'm Alana Rizzo. That is my pal, Clint Pasias. It is awesome to see you. So we are in one full weekend to the 2024 Major League Baseball season. So, of course, let's just overreact. Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we just overreact about everything? And we're going to start, Clint, with uh, your thoughts. Let's go right to the big ticket, my friend. Mookie Betts is, uh, I would say, Babe Ruthian right now. Are you liking oh. what you're seeing out of Marcus Lynn Betts? I love what I'm seeing out of Marcus Lynn Betts. But again, let's start overreacting on the positive side. You're, you're uh, comparing Mookie Betts, Marcus Lynn Betts to uh, Babe Ruth. And there's good reason for that, Dodgers fans, as we get you all set up for what Mookie Betts has already done so far offensively this season. Then we're going to get into a little bit about what he's done at the shortstop position. Go figure, though, Clint. He's the leadoff man, as you know this, for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He leads the team with 10 RBI. He has been on fire at the plate. And even though he went hitless on Sunday that ended his streak of four straight games with the home run he's still 11 for 22 he's batting 500 right now batting 500 you see the stats on the screen there uh everything that could be read when it comes to his uh his batting tool is red he's absolutely tearing the cover off the ball leading baseball in fan graphs wins above replacement at 0.9 right now which we already almost have a win above replacement uh what six games into a season that's pretty damn impressive four home runs there's your leader like you said nine runs scored 10 runs batted in tied with uh lourdes goriel of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the kind of surprising one. Uh, also tied for the lead. Three defensive runs saved as a shortstop. Yeah, he's playing a little bit of second base as well, but the bat is there, and the glove, the arm, all that kind of stuff doesn't seem like it's going to be as big of a problem as some people really wanted to overreact and make it to be. Yeah, you're right, and there's a couple of people, including our own friend and teammate, Eric Kratz over on foul territory that really kind of questioned whether Mookie Betts was a playoff caliber shortstop. You had the conversation with them. What's your take? Yeah. I mean, I understand the, the thought process, it, you know, it's, you're moving a gold glove outfielder to the infield. And then last minute, shifting him over to shortstop i could understand the fears i could understand do you want this guy to be your your playoff shortstop is that going to be a concern so far does not seem to be a major issue but um you know still it's still early we will we will uh, lean on small sample size and not overreact too much in the positive we know again anger sells but uh, happy to see what Mookie is doing so far, playing a really good second base, playing a very nice shortstop, and had a couple of uh, really good plays at short uh, over the weekend as well. And you know what? It's not just Mookie Betts getting the job done. We're going to have Will Smith coming up on the show here in just a few minutes, but the Dodgers offense has been as advertised. We talk so much about the big three as far as Shohei, you know, Mookie Betts, Shohei, and um, Freddie Freeman. But Max Muncy has come to the plate, what, how many times? Averaging, I mean, the guy, Max Muncy's come to the plate with men on base in 17 of his 26 plate appearances so far and has looked pretty, pretty damn good, including a two-run shot to give him the lead. I was say, actually, I think we got Will ready now. Let's ask oh, Will good. ourselves. William Dill Smith, the owner of the uh, longest contract extension in Dodgers history for a homegrown player. Welcome to the show. Will, how you doing, my guy? I'm good, guys. Thanks for uh, having me on here. Oh, Will, it's great to see you. Congratulations on the well-earned extension to you and to Kara, obviously, um, and, and to Charlotte. So exciting. What goes through your head as a player knowing that you're going to be in that uniform for the foreseeable future and perhaps end your career in a Dodger uniform? Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. You know, that's something, you know, I think a lot of players, you know, hope for. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be given that opportunity by, you know, by the Dodgers. Um, and yeah, you know, I always wanted to stay a Dodger. I, I love being there. You know, I don't think there's anyone more committed to, to winning and winning World Series than the Los Angeles Dodgers. And, you know, I'm just excited for the opportunity to be a part of that. Yeah, you know, is, there, is there anything scary about the idea of committing <laughs> the next 10 years and ultimately your entire, we hope, baseball career to one team? I mean, yeah, 10 years is definitely, you know, a long time. But no, I, I think I I think I wanted to keep playing for another 10 years or so. Um, so, you know, committing to the Dodgers was was pretty easy for 10 years for me. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't it was not too scary. I'm not not too worried about it. Um, 
or anything like that. Well, let's brag on your starting rotation uh, here for a little bit. Yamamoto had a really nice second uh, outing for the Los Angeles Dodgers. A little bit of a hiccup there in Seoul. We can understand that. But Bobby Miller, my goodness, as Walker Bueller would say, yeesh, he just shoved um, over the course of the weekend. What have you seen so far from the starting staff, including Tyler Glasnow? Yeah, they're they're all studs, you know. Um, all five of them, even a couple of guys that are on the IL coming back later this year. Um, you know, they just they just work really hard. They, you know, they get after it. They're bullpens. You can see the intent behind every pitch they throw. And then they get out in the game and they just compete. They obviously have good stuff, but, you know, they're just competitors. Um, they're guys, you know, you want going out every five days. Um, you want You want to be catching those guys and having them on your team. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Yamamoto, a guy that you didn't necessarily have a, a huge book on before he came a Los Angeles Dodger, but a guy that you're obviously going to be catching for the foreseeable future. When he's right, what is his stuff like to catch? Yeah, he, when he's right, he's he's executing almost every pitch he throws. It's it's incredible the you know the command he has, um, just being able to go in out up down with his fastball, landing his curveball. You know, keeping it short and then a splitter. A splitter is just a wipeout pitch. Um, he's got that cutter too for a little wrinkle. So it's just mixing, and it's just his ability to execute is it's it's what's going to keep him going and be really good in the big leagues for you know for a long time. So we already had our first uh, big, exciting game. Uh, of course, Max Muncy was on uh, foul territory earlier today, talking about the the big time uh, two run shot to put the Dodgers ahead. I mean, that just has to really help solidify the vibes uh, early in the season. It's not too much of a new team. You got a lot of returning pieces, but still, every year there's a different field of the ball club. We're not doing this anymore. We're not doing this anymore. And uh, what, what does something like do uh, something like that do early in the season to kind of galvanize a, a newer group of, of dudes? Yeah, I think, you know, that's that's all the fun stuff, but I think – you know, the most important thing is is the fight. It's it's showing the fight we've had. And we've had that since I've been a Dodger and I've, you know, been around that for a while. But I think for the new guys, it's seeing the fight every single game. Um, you know, we're never out of it. And I think just being able to see that and see that, you know, not taking bats off when you're down a couple of runs, uh, pushing one across in the sixth. So it's only two more we have to come back in the eighth, you know, stuff like that. Um it's just a fight, and I think we really showed it this weekend. And I think also that you know all the talent we have on this team, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It, I mean, it means a lot, but it doesn't mean we're guaranteed wins. And I think we got to fight for every last win. And I think this weekend showed exactly that. Well, one thing the Dodgers have had for a long time is an unbelievable amount of talent, not only on the current roster, but in the farm system for over the last decade. And you're going to get some reinforcements back here in your starting rotation, hopefully soon. Walker Bueller, I know, um, you know, he, he was pleased with what he's doing so far. He feels pretty good. And if you left it up to Walker Bueller, he would have been back two months ago. What's that going to be like to get him back in? And then, of course, you still have Kirsch. You still have some other reinforcements coming in. Yeah, I'm excited for for Walker to get back there. I know he's he's chomping at the bit, um, but yeah, he's a stud. You know, multi-time All Star. He's done in the playoffs. Just a guy that goes out and competes and gives everything he's got. He's fun. He's fun to catch. He's fun to work with. Um, he's a guy that you know guys love playing behind. Um, you know, they love the fire that he brings, and you know, just the just the want to win. It's it's incredible with him and. You know, I, I couldn't be more happy. He's he's healthy. He's he's close to being back. You know, I like he, he wants to be back yesterday. So I'm excited for, you know, that first start he's going to get here in a couple of weeks probably. So, Will, we already know you're going to be here for a long time. Dodger fans are happy about it. You are, what, one of the, like, third, fourth longest tenured position player on the team. If my math has served me right, you got you, you got Max Muncy, but you also got your battery or your your catching tandem mate there in Austin Barnes. Talk a little bit about the relationship with Barnesy, the captain there. Uh, how does he help you? How does he help the staff and the rest of the team on a day-to-day? -day? We know he's not playing every day. What, how does, yeah, what does Austin Barnes mean for you and the rest of the team? Yeah, I think, you know, he's a guy that's been around for a while. Um, knows what he's doing back there. He's just a competitor. He loves he loves to win. He'll do just about anything. And, you know, he's, he's a good guy to have on your team. He's, uh, you know, just, uh, just a gritty guy, I guess. So, yeah, he's fun. He's a good teammate. Um, 
you know, I'm happy he's with us and yeah. We all love Sam. Remember Chase Utley giving him the nickname <laughs> Sam. We all love Sam. All right, $140 million, my friend, 10 years. To whom much is given, much is expected. What is uh, the first order of business? What do you buy with a contract like that? <laughs> what do I buy? Uh, I don't know yet. Um, yeah, I don't know. We've thought about it. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we still have time. It's still setting in. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money there. I want to go back to the Barnsey thing. We know Barnsey, he's a scrapper. Who you got in a fight? You got Barnsey, you got Joe Kelly in a bar fight. Uh, Joe <laughs> Kelly. I'll a, as I said, I'll throw in a sleeper too. I'll throw in a sleeper. Kyle Hurt. Kyle Hurt? Ooh. I mean, Kyle, Kyle's got the size on Barnsey, but I don't know. I've never. Barnsey, you know, he put up a fight. I don't know about Kyle, but he's definitely got the size. So maybe. I, I don't know. He's, he's I think still, Barnsey's pretty scrappy. I think Barnsley yeah. might win in a cage match. Riverside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was actually talking about, it was Luxie yesterday. Gavin was going around the clubhouse talking a bunch of smacks saying he, who he beat up. And I had him at the, bottom, at the bottom, so I want to make sure he knows that I'm going on air. <laughs> Gavin. Let's talk a little bit about Luxie. This is a kid, obviously, that was going to be the starting shortstop for you guys last year until he got hurt in spring training and now has an opportunity, obviously, to be on the opening day roster, the big league roster for the entire season. Um, moved him over to second. Obviously, Mookie's at, at the shortstop position. But what have you seen in terms of his development, Will? Yeah, I think he's just got to get comfortable back out there again. You know, he missed all of last year. Um, that's tough. It's tough, you know, not really expecting, not – feeling the game game flow, not really knowing what's going to happen, how you're going to feel out there, um, you know, the first time back, um, just physically and mentally. So for him, you know, I think it's just going to be settling in the first month or two, just getting back to, you know, getting his feet wet kind of thing and being comfortable out there. But, you know, I have no concerns with Luxie out there. Um, he works hard. He's a good player, great player. Um, I think he'll be just fine. And I'm, you know, I'm just glad he's healthy and back out there with us. Will, do you keep in touch with Kirsch at all in terms of his process and his progress and, and when he might be coming back, just conversations about those things? Yeah, he's he's been around all weekend. Um, I I don't know his timeline exactly. Um, you ask Kirsch, he's ready to pitch today. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really in those conversations, but, you know, that's I can't wait for him to be back, um, be healthy. You know, it's Clayton Kershaw, you know, Hall of Famer, just, just stud. So... You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to when he gets back with us. So, Will, to, to shift gears a little bit here, we know you and Kara have the uh, Catching Hope Foundation. Got to ask you about May 8th. What can you tell us about Will Smith's comedy night? Because we know you're the funniest guy in the clubhouse, man. What are you looking forward yeah. to with that? What can Far people off, I, I am not the one giving the jokes, not the one up, you know, just stand up. We've got uh, professionals for that. But, yeah, it should uh, – should be a fun night. Um, you know, I know a lot of the teammates are going to come, bring their wives, bring a date. Um, you know, we have some good, a good lineup of comedians. Uh, I know Cedric the Entertainer, some other guys. So it should just be a fun night, fun, relaxing night. Um, it's all for good cause, for catching hope. You know, we're doing a lot of uh, outreach stuff this year in in the LA area, and you know, we hope we hope to do more in the future. And this is just kind of the first big event we're doing, and we're excited for it. One guy that is pretty funny, uh, Kike Hernandez, uh, was ESPN, uh, mic'd up on ESPN. Was he giving away any secrets? I know the Pitchcom stuff was uh, going over yeah. the microphone. Did he give anything up? Uh, yeah, other than the pitches, uh, you know, I was actually down in the cage, kind of getting loose, looking for, looking ahead um, for that game. And, yeah, we could hear, you know, change up with Stoney on the mound. He's throwing a lot of those. Uh, but luck luckily, I don't think the Cardinals were catching on soon enough and couldn't really really. <laughs> I mean, we knew uh, change up, change up, change up was coming a lot with uh, Stoner there yep. and that nasty, nasty change up. Uh, we got a question from the chat from Geshmake. What is your general opinion of the Pitchcom? That's something that, that's come along since you've made your debut. How has it kind of helped or hurt the job? Uh, I think I think it makes it easier. Um, you know, it's a pretty direct conversation, and they know exactly what pitch to throw. Um, I think you lose a little bit of the – you know, the interpersonal or interpersonals with the, uh, with the pitcher, you know, I can use a little more body language, I guess, with, with fingers and, you know, get a little more something behind it, you know, in certain situations, I guess, uh, which the pitch comics always, you know, the same fastball voice tone. And, 
you miss out a little bit on that, but it does make it easier. I don't have to worry about getting crossed up as much. Um, although the other night with Bobby, the first at bat we were using fingers, he saw a slider through the changeup. Um, and he's getting a lot of love for a nasty changeup, but uh, that was just. <laughs> Along the same lines, Will, what is your opinion uh, with the change in, you know, the, the, the pitch clock and, and, you know, having to get ready faster and deliver the ball faster? I mean, you guys have a couple of guys coming back from TJ surgery, not to say that that's the reason they had TJ surgery, obviously, but what's your opinion on recovery time and, and just kind of speeding up the game that way? Yeah, it's, it's quick. I'm all for it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what going from 20 seconds to 18 seconds with men on did this year, but. You know, I think it's it's more entertaining for the fans. It's it gets the action going. Um, you know, for me personally, it's sometimes a little more stressful because you have to think quicker in big situations. You have to think through things, and you don't have as much time to think fully through things. But you know, it just means I have to be prepared, and pitchers got to be more prepared, and we just got to be just challenge us to be a little better when it comes to pitch calling and making the right decisions. So I don't know. I'm for it. I think it's a good thing just for the entertainment factor um, and not. No one wants to be sitting around watching a guy not get in the box for 20 seconds or a pitcher take 30 seconds to throw a pitch. Nobody wants to see that. So I think it's good for the game. Yeah, less less of this, less of uh, you know, no, the batting adjustment. Nomar would not make it in this league uh, right now. We know that much, Alana. Uh, you talk about catching. You talk about putting down the fingers a little bit. You talk about the pitch comm. Uh, let's get back to the contract idea. Hey, we're not looking way, way down the road. By the way, happy uh, belated birthday. You just turned 20, uh, 29. Ten years is a long way away, and that's a long time for a catcher. Do you see yourself moving off the position at any point, a little Joe Maurer in the future, or are you not even thinking that far yet? No, I'm not even thinking that far yet, honestly. Um, I don't know. I feel like I could. I grew up an infielder and stuff, so I feel like I would pick it up easily if I had to. Uh, but no, I'm totally focused on being a catcher, you know, being back there every night. All right. First of a three game set with the uh, Giants, of course, a, a rival that you guys know very well. James Paxton takes the hill for the Dodgers tonight. Tell me what you've seen from him so far in spring, uh, obviously solidifying a spot in that rotation for you guys. And also conversely, the Giants. I mean, this is a, this is a different look team than it was last year. What do you expect from them? Yeah, I mean, firstly, with you know, with Pax, he's, he's a good pitcher. He's been around for a while. Um, and when he's on, he's, he's, he's dominant. Um, he's, you know, a really tough lefty, uh, really good fastball, spins the ball really well. Um, just goes out and competes and gets guys out. And, you know, I faced him a few years ago. It's not a fun at bat. Um, so I, you know, I expect a lot from him. Um, I think we all do. And yeah, as far as the Giants, yeah, different team, you know, a couple new guys, position players, uh, a couple new starting pitchers, obviously. Um, so they should be, they should be good. They're always, you know, it's always a fight against them. Um, it's always, you know, it's always fun games. Crowds are into it. Um, you know, those, those are the games you want to, you want to be a part of. So, you know, it should be a good, good three days, uh, against them and, uh, should be fun. Yeah, we mentioned uh, Paxton, one of the new starters, another one of the new starters who is not quite starting this season is Shohei Otani. I haven't talked about Otani yet. Uh, we're not going to get into all the other stuff, but we're going to get into the important stuff of this guy just also signed a massive contract. And I know a lot of people like to know, where does uh, where does Otani take the team? I know it's early in the season, but where is he buying dinner for folks out there? That's what, that's what, that's what I know our producers really want to know. They want to know? No, I don't know yet. We haven't, we haven't really had a road trip yet. Uh, we had Korea, but yeah, I don't know. Our first road weekend this, this coming weekend. So yeah, I don't know about all of that, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a, you know, he's one of the, he's the, probably the best player in the game. Um, and yeah, this year he's not pitching. He's on the mound, but you know, next year he'll be back out there, but you know, just as bad. He can, he can go deep anytime. He's, you know, he's never going to really slump just because of how fast he is. Knock on wood. Uh, but he's just, he's such a dynamic player. This, this talent and the power and the speed and all of that together is, is, is incredible. And it's fun to be a part of. It's fun to watch him work, um, you know, in the cage and all that. Um, so he definitely, he definitely makes us a better team. Um, he's fun to be, fun to be around and fun to play with. And, you know, he'll, he's definitely going to help us win some ball games. Well, I don't know if you saw the play between uh, Reese Hoskins uh, sliding into Jeff McNeil, of course, when the Brewers and the uh, the Mets were going at it over the course of the weekend. Did you see the play? And what's your opinion on it? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, 
I don't know. I feel like five years ago, this wouldn't have been a conversation at all because that was pretty normal to try to take a second baseman out when they're trying to turn two. Um, I, it was, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much of an opinion on it. It was just kind of, I don't know, it just seemed like a baseball play to me. That's what I thought, too. I thought it was a clean sled. Gritty baseball yeah. play. Um, Chase Utley. A la Chase Utley. Will Smith, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you again. Congratulations um, on a well-earned contract, Dodger, for a foreseeable future. We appreciate you taking the time to be with Clint and myself here on Dodgers Territory. You be well. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right. Always great to have uh, players on the program, Clint. And, you know, Will Smith is a guy that is incredibly humble. And I, I you and I talked about this when um, – we were on the air the last time together, but he does remind me a lot of Buster Posey, a guy that doesn't say a ton, but doesn't need to just because of what he does for you behind the plate, the way he manages the staff and what he can do for you offensively as well. Yeah. And the thing I love there, he says, look, I'm not thinking about down the road. I'm, I want to be a catcher for the entirety of this 10 year deal. Uh, that that's how important this guy was that he was handed. Like we said last week, handed the longest extension ever for a Dodger you know, player drafted by the team. They think very highly of this guy. They think of uh, highly of his ability to, to manage the team, uh, manage the pitching staff, call a game. And, um, Love having that dude around and appreciate him being our, our uh, you know, first player guest on here on Dodgers Territory. Yeah, it's great to have him always. Uh, love having guests on the show. We always appreciate them taking the time. Again, it's a big it's a big series tonight against the Giants. It's always a big series when you play against your you know in-division rival and, of course, the history that these two clubs have. All right, time now for Behind the Seams. And we talked to Will a little bit about it earlier just as far as the pitching was concerned. But you, you have to like what you saw first from Yamamoto. He did not have a good outing, obviously, in Seoul. But he came back in front of fans at Dodger Stadium and at least gave us a little bit more of what the Dodgers were expecting when they signed him to the biggest contract ever for a pitcher. Yeah, Yamasan really showed up, showed out. Uh, I mean, he was not quite uh, Bobby Miller going off, but still <laughs> five Ks in there, pitches through a 45-minute uh, delay between pitches. So really, it's like the offense just really uh, went out and took to uh, the, the uh, opposing team as well as they could. But you like to see that. Him going out there, uh, he's he's kind of lauded. He's praised for his ability to, to stay loose, and he's not really a guy who's going to you know put on the bulk in the weight room. And the fact that he's able to sit there and and you know spend 40 minutes away go out still throw another clean inning much better debut at dodger stadium as we see yama on the mound here he had everything kind of working for him the splitter was disgusting fastball he's dotting it and will will can tell uh that one as well and flip it in the curveball um I think you see why, and I think some other teams are seeing why the Dodgers gave him all of that money for all of those years. This is an ace. All right. Do you think he needs to learn, though, to pitch a little bit more, you know, high and tight, if you will? I think that's one of the things that was a knock on him coming in because Japanese pitchers don't necessarily do that. But was it more of the fact that the Cardinals are a bad offense or that Yamamoto was giving you what you needed to see? Mm, I, I will stay positive on this. I'm going to say it was Yama giving us what we needed to see, but then you see everybody else in the starting rotation kind of, you know, taking uh, taking the Cardinals to school a little bit. It's a young team. We know it's a young team, but also this is a pretty damn good starting staff. I would say maybe we had some moments in the offseason, Dodgers fans of overreacting or worrying a little bit about, yeah, Gavin Stone is your number five guy. You're also worried or, or relying on Emmett Sheehan, James Paxton, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, hasn't thrown a lot of innings over the last number of years. But you still have somebody like a Yamamoto who can take it to a team like the Cardinals. You could probably take it to a team like the Yankees with that new look outfield. And I think this was more of a show of the pitch staff is – as good as we kind of hoped it could be and is only going to be getting better. Well, Derek Lewandowski, who does such a tremendous job for us on all of our social stuff, says that as a Yankee fan, Yamamoto would have looked good in pinstripes. Guess what, Derek? He wanted to pitch with Shohei and he wanted to be a Dodger. So tough, tough, my friend, Yankees fans. All right. This is Dodgers territory, Derek, not Yankees territory. All right. Let us talk about um, Walker Bueller coming back. You heard Will Smith say that, you know, if again, if it was up to Bueller, he would have been back, you know, two months ago, but he's getting close. And that is going to be one heck of a guy coming back into a very good starting rotation. 
Yeah, that this is a game changing type of dude. He's my X factor for this team this season. They will go as far as Walker Bueller will take them because you look at the last few years. 2022, they get bounced in the NLDS. 23, they get bounced in the NLDS. Who wasn't there? Walker, F, and Bueller. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, I know you want to see him with the tight pants on. I think the world wants to see him with the tight I pants don't. on. I don't. I don't. I don't know where that came from, but I don't. Especially not especially not this year's tight pants. With you can but see we, right, right through it. No, 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 no. The important thing is we want Walker Bueller back on the mound at Dodger Stadium, and he made uh, a big step over the weekend, making his uh, first rehab start at AAA Oklahoma City, hits 95.7 on the gun with the fastball. Everything was kind of working well. Uh, I think he what, gave up three runs over uh, four innings. But the important thing is, came out of it healthy, came out of it clean. What do you like about Walker Bueller this weekend? I love the fact that he's right back where he needs to be. I love the fact that, look at his tweet. I, I effed up, but you know, goes on and on. I mean, that's just the Walker Bueller, the competitive, the competitiveness that you want to see. You see that type of competitive fire in the position players. You saw it with Max Muncy on that two run, you know, home run that uh, put them ahead and ended up ha having them win the game. I like that fire from our pitchers. And you don't often yeah. see that. You did see it a little bit with Bobby Miller over the course of the weekend. And I know some people were saying, oh, big deal. It was the St. Louis Cardinals lineup. There's two MVPs uh, in the St. Louis Cardinals lineup. So it is not as if they're a bad team. I, I just I like seeing the competition. And Bobby Miller reminds me of Walker Bueller. Uh, they have a lot of the same characteristics. So I think if you get Butane in there with Bobby Miller, with Tyler Glasnow, Yamamoto, obviously, you know, James Paxton tonight, this is a good enough rotation to maintain and sustain until, you know, Kirsch gets back and, and you have, uh, you know, you, this is a team that's built to get to October. Now it remains to be seen if they'll get past, you know, that first round. But uh, Bueller had all of his stuff. Uh, and, and as long as he comes out of this healthy, uh, again, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get from a guy that's had two Tommy Johns. How long is it? going to take for the rest to come off but i think he's in a really really good spot and one last thing we haven't talked enough about gavin stone yeah the numbers weren't as pretty three runs over uh over five innings but he was nasty the changeup was nasty even though the entire world knew it was coming thanks to the pitchcom and espn <laughs> uh in-game interview but uh, the numbers aside the the uh, gavin stone absolutely crushed it he had well, i think he was hitting 97 on the fastball like no i'll i'll keep praising the change uh my my buddy doug mccain will say that thing uh, moves more than a, a military a, a family or whatever i'm i like messing up my guy doug's um <laughs> jokes or whatever but moves the, more than a family that's in the military yeah, is that yeah, what you're trying to say okay yeah, we all get it. I know I'm going to get some crap tonight on my show for me messing up that Doug line, but it is what it is. He's very good. Bobby Miller, very good, punching out 11. And the future does look pretty damn bright for this Los Angeles Dodgers starting rotation. Yeah, I love it. Uh, again, first weekend in uh, in the MLB season in 2024, there were some overreactions. Everyone's already crowning the Yankees as World Series champions because they swept the Astros in, in Houston. And uh, Juan Soto is a, a man among gods there um, or God of men there. See, I, I can screw it up, too. But it's it's a fun it's a fun conversation to have, you know, and this is a Dodgers team that we knew was going to be good. Uh, my question was, do they have enough pitching debt? Time will tell, but uh, it looks good so far. All right, it is time now for our last licks. All right, last licks. We are looking uh, for help. My friend Clint Pasillas with a dog named Roger. Roger was saved out of the South LA um, shelter in Chesterfield there in Los Angeles with a cherry eye in both eyes. So you can take a look at his eyes. Plus he needed to be neutered. He was rescued or pulled by Giselle's legacy and Gidry's Guardian Foundation is uh, handling uh, the neuter and the surgery for cherry eye. So you can see how his eyes are red there, but we did get the surgery on Friday as well as um, his manhood was taken away, I got to tell you, but you got to save the pet population. Um, he got neutered, which is a good thing. We don't need any more uh, unwanted litter. So if you care to donate, go to GidrysGuardian.org, put Roger on your donation. And uh, thank you so much. We always appreciate all the help. We are a 100% donation-based foundation. So another Dodger dog for you, my friend. Save the pups out there, people. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for us here on uh, Dodgers territory, on the foul territory um, pro, uh, platform. What's coming up on your show other than the fact that you keep messing up Doug's lines tonight on all Dodgers? 
that that's always going to be uh, an easy easy thing for me to do. I love screwing up lines because I get too excited and I want to get through them. Uh, tonight I will also be having some overreactions. I'm, I'm going to be going live at six before the game, so check it out. All Dodgers with Clint Pasillas here on YouTube. If you're watching, we also have a podcast. Hey, Dodgers Territory has a podcast too. Go check it out. Subscribe there, guys. Uh, leave 18 star reviews if possible. Those are things that really do help out all of our channels and all of these platforms. But uh, yeah, tube in and uh, let's talk more Dodgers later tonight. Yeah, all Dodgers 6 p.m. Pacific right before the game. Dodgers with a three game set against the San Francisco Giants. We appreciate you being with us here on uh, Dodgers territory. Again, check us out, like us, subscribe on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts. And we will be back on Thursday. Have a good night. We'll